That did not come to fruition. Madison has been thirsting for a shot at the Roughnecks, and they get it tonight. I think they are coming into this game emotionally ready. They are determined to show the audience at large that they are a team that deserves to play in the finals. Well, the Radicals have a great history on this field, but their winning streak at home was ended on a great comeback by the Seattle Cascades in the semis last year. Meanwhile, the Dallas Roughnecks 2-0 and on this field, and they've added a couple Radicals from last year, one of them being Jay Frood, who has just had an insane season so far, Megan. He's done it statistically, and he's passed the eye test, too. Yeah, he he is a player that is a healthy mix of natural athleticism and outstanding field sense. You couple that with his experience on a team as talented as the Radicals, he steps onto the field with the Roughnecks and has just gelled beautifully. It's amazing how they have implemented him both offensively and defensively. He's in the top five in the league in goals. He's number one in the league with blocks tied with New York's Jeff Babbitt. He's number one in the league in plus minus. They find a lot of different ways to get him the disc. Yeah, and it's certainly not difficult to do. You put him on the field, he's going to do great things. I just think the chemistry he has developed with Dallas so early in the season really shows what an outstanding, well-rounded player he is. Well, the Dallas Roughnecks went undefeated last year. They are 7-2 coming into tonight in second place in the South. For Madison, Kevin Pettit-Scantling has the Radicals in second place in the Midwest. They're chasing undefeated Minnesota. And for KPS, he's been on this team the last couple years. He's been an impact guy. He's taken it to a new level in 2017. He certainly has. He looks faster. He looks more agile. But I don't necessarily think he has increased his athleticism that much. I think he has just become wiser as an ultimate player. And that wisdom is helping him elevate his athletic potential. He's becoming aware of, of the field around him, which is why he's able to make plays on men who he's not even guarding. And is, these highlights indicate he has dictated the disc, demanding it on the turn, producing downfield. Many of his teammates have said he has become a much greater leader this season. And Madison, still with a sour taste in its mouth from last year, KPS and the Radicals are ready to go on a scorching Saturday night in Madison, Wisconsin. The Radicals and the Roughnecks meeting for the first time ever next. predicting thunderstorms, but instead plenty of sunshine here on a Saturday night at Bree Stevens Field, just off the edge of downtown Madison, Wisconsin. In the South Division, the Roughnecks are just a half game behind Raleigh. Flyers have a tough game themselves tonight against Jacksonville. That's getting underway right now. This Dallas team, glad to have most of its key players back. Stanley Peterson returning today. Dan Emmons, who's missed the past month, We'll be back on the D-line as well. Madison Radicals, coached by Tim DeBile, who's a part owner of the team. They'll begin on defense, and they'll begin today, Megan, in second place in this division. They'll end the weekend in second place as well, because on a 15-game Week 10, there's one team in the league that is off, and that's the undefeated Minnesota Windchill. So they're enjoying a couple beverages, relaxing at home tonight, watching their division rivals, who they will play in Minneapolis next week. And Madison no doubt eager to sully their record next weekend, looking for a rematch that they hope proves they have changed their team dynamic this season. There's uh, definitely a festive atmosphere as usual here at Breeze Stevens Field. The Radicals launch the opening pull and we are underway. The first ever meeting between Dallas and Madison. 
tonight happens to be the 75th game, including regular season and playoffs in Madison Radicals history. Jimmy Mickle with his first touch. Dylan Freechild underneath, picked up by Brian Hart. Be interesting to see the matchups early on in this game. Cross field all the way, 50 yards to Mazer. Mickles being chased by Kevin Pettit Scantling. It's Bill Everhart on the Madison native Brandon Malachek, who's got a lot of history in this city. Stanley Peterson, remember, separated his shoulder just a few weeks ago, but returning to the field today, said he practiced on Tuesdays, feeling good. Dallas had the two losses on the road at Jacksonville and Raleigh, but other than that, they are perfect all time. Malachek through the hands of Mickle and knocked down by Kevin Pettit-Scantling. That hammer aside, Dallas was looking pretty timid, pretty calm to start out this offensive point. I think they know Madison is very proud of their defense. They didn't want to do anything untoward. It's surprising that a simple hammer is where they managed to drop the disc. One of the things that the Madison coaching staff was worried about today was how their D-line would capitalize on break opportunities. They're one for one. A dime from Peter Graffy to Chris Weiland, and the Radicals open the game with a defensive break. Beg your pardon, Sterling Kanaki with the game's first goal. I had an interesting conversation with Shrywise before the game, asking him just exactly what was going on with their season. He said Madison started out their entire season with low energy, kind of coming off of the loss of last year. They weren't going at it at the next level, which was necessary to elevate in this ever improving AUDL league. So they've had to kind of recreate their team culture. They're coming out with the intensity that they meant to come out with at the very beginning of the season. Well, they've also been missing players throughout the start of the season. Peter Graffy, for instance, who has led the AUDL in D's in two of the last three seasons, he's only played half of the team's six games thus far. Just picked up assist number seven of the season. Great handler defense, and it's knocked away by Josh Wilson. It's 2-0 Madison. What a start for the Radicals. 100 seconds gone, first quarter. 2-0 on some beautiful defensive conversion. You saw some very quick awareness from Wilson. As soon as he made that D, streaked to the end zone. He was all alone, had plenty of steps on his player. There was no doubt he was bringing that score in for Madison. Jaden uh, Scullion on the spot, picked it up quickly. And the Madison D-line opening the game with back-to-back -back breaks. Tim DeBile could not have envisioned a better start. There's Graffy launching the pull. He had 42 Ds a year ago. He had 49 back in 2014. Now, two years ago, Megan, Andrew Meshnick led the league in Ds. A radical has been atop the defensive chart three straight years. Of course, the, perhaps the most notable missing piece for Madison tonight is Andrew Meshnick, who's been an Iron Man. Not happy to have to miss this game, but another obligation took him away from the Madison D-line tonight. Free Child and Mickle have both been on the field through the first three points for Dallas. What a catch by Free Child with Graffy bearing down. Mr. Give and Go doing work. Free Child on the goal line. Gets Dallas on the board to the former radical Abe Coffin. Free Child really dictated Dallas's offense at that point. You saw any time that the movement started to slow, he was quick to make viable cuts, and then lots of give and go to get it just outside of the end zone. It's a heck of a catch there with Graffy nearby, and then you know, this is just what Free Child has made his M.O. throughout his ultimate career. Quick disc movement. 
Certainly a, a worthy member of Team USA, the World Games team that's heading to Poland in July. I've heard some people say that he might be the best one-on-one -on -one defender on that team, which is high praise considering who he's playing with. First O point for Madison, Andrew Brown, Pat Trywise, Colin Camp. Ross Barker is on the field wearing number 73, the Wisconsin Hodag making his Radicals debut tonight. And that's Dan Emmons laying out unsuccessfully. Deep shot will sail too far. A couple things to note there, Megan. Emmons had a hamstring injury a little over a month ago. He also coming back from a shoulder injury that he suffered in a bicycle accident. He was hit by a car in a very scary collision a couple weeks ago, about three weeks ago. And he was telling me before the game, he's not sure whether he'll be able to lay out. It'll be kind of a moment thing. First deep point of the game, he's on the ground. I feel like with players like Emmons, it's really hard for them to turn off that intuition to simply bid for the disc. I'm glad he was feeling well enough to accomplish that without doing any further harm. Hollering to Matt Bennett. Back to his college teammate, Dalton Smith. Blading throw that Frude catches. Some off-kilter throws and catches, but Dallas across midfield. Smith trying to drop the hammer over the top, and he does. Two former Texas A&M players, Dalton Smith and Ben Lewis, collaborate for the score. A Dallas break evens us at two. offense looking more frenzied from Dallas that particular point but I feel like that's a speed they thrive on they can go without the same kind of design that we saw from them the first two points and still function really well um, that is going to be very difficult for Madison to defend against because the speed um, and direction changes so sporadically for Ben Lewis it's his fifth game of the year just his third goal of the season he played for Austin last year for Dalton Smith, he has done more and more every week. He's currently fifth in the league in plus minus at plus 41. Out of bounds pull. And Tom Annan on the field today for the Radicals. But here it's, I believe, Bill Everhart picking up the disc. Annan still in school in Boston, got in around midnight for the game last night, just his second game of the year for the Radicals. KPS on the under. And the throw a little bit behind Scully in the intended target. So Madison, if you joined us a couple minutes late, Madison opened the game with back-to-back -back breaks, then a hold for Dallas, a break for Dallas. Roughnecks looking to get back on serve here in the opening quarter. Kai Marshall goes cross field. Plenty of time for Reed Bacon. Near the end zone, Casey Hogg. Back to Bacon. Bennett. And that's knocked away, but contact interference called against Brian Hart. Very close play. Kevin Christian will continue with possession. Be an interesting replay to check out after this possession concludes. Bennett, Scuber, end zone, got it. 3-2 Dallas. The throws Dallas has in their arsenal really makes them dangerous at any position. You think you have the break side very well taken away, and then with no difficulty whatsoever, they manage to put up a beautiful scuba. There's the first turnover, the pass to Scully a little bit behind him. Tough to tell whether Hart got disc or hand yeah. first. It was certainly very close. And Kai Marshall, in part because of the double team near the disc, he was wide open in the back of the end zone. And Bennett can, as we know, throw the disc anywhere he wants on the field. 
Mickel back out there to pull the 2014 Callahan Award winner. Annan and Brown, the two handlers. Barker, Wiseman, Camp, Shrywise, and Scott Riggles out of retirement are the cutters. Riggles thought last year would be his final season in the AUDL. Shrywise with an uncharacteristic turf for that flick. Riggles the giant, gentle giant though. Great speed. And Mickel drops the disc in response. That's the second disc that's gone through Jimmy's hands in the opening six minutes. I, I think both teams feel the weight of this matchup. I've said sometimes this was the championship that never was. Both feel that pride is very much on the line tonight. Tom Annan, just shy of the goal line, hauls in the flick from Dave Wiseman. And then Brown punches it in for Colin Camp. What a catch from the animal. We've seen Dalton Smith make that defensive play on several of the league's top stars. And yet Annan won that battle. The rest of his team very quick to recognize they needed to get their ASAP. Dallas did a great job of making those throwing lanes difficult. Brown really didn't have a lot of room to work with as he threw that disc to Colin Camp. Really important goal for the Radicals yeah. to stabilize this thing as Dallas had scored three in a row, had all the momentum. A gigantic pull that sails out the back. Over 100 yards on the fly on that shot from Graffy. Radicals looking like they could possibly go zone here. Brian Hart and Bill Everhart will double team Free Child right off the bat. And a low throw that was dropped, I believe, and the referees overrule. Integrity call, there was a foul on the mark. So the fans are booing. They don't realize that Brian Hart is the one who said, yeah, I fouled Free Child. So an early integrity. Coffin on the under. Low throw dug out by Malachek, who went to the University of Wisconsin here in Madison. Played club ultimate here for a long time. A lot of history in this city. Madison Edgewood High School, the same high school as Scott Riggles. The same high school as a groom who wandered up to the gates of Bree Stevens Field about an hour before the game today and asked if he could toss on the field with his new wife who was wearing her wedding dress. And we've got some footage of that that we'll show you later today. Malachek over the top, that will not work. It's Coolidge, a Kanaki rather with a D. That was great recognition from Kanaki. He saw that disc go up, looked behind him to see where the intended receiver was, and then got himself in between the player and the disc. Everhart shooting for Brown, verse, uh, for Hart rather, versus Mazur. Hart. Flips it near the goal line, and Kanaki lands in. That's a break for Madison. Kanaki with the bookend at that point. Yeah, off the Malachek turnover. We've seen in the Midwest for years, Madison's defense can force you to really work. Dallas is a team that while they've shown they can work, they also like to score quickly. They like to make highlights. So far, that's played into Madison's hands. 
Yeah, Madison knows that, that Dallas is going to go for those big shots, and I think they feel fairly confident matching up against the Dallas players on the one-to-one. -one. Uh, I think Madison has to be a little bit disappointed that they don't have Meshnik in for this game. Last week when Dallas played Atlanta, Atlanta put some double team on Dallas that really made Dallas uncomfortable. And I feel as the point started. Uh, Before the game, Megan, here is the footage of the, the new bride and groom in the wedding dress throwing on the field with Scott Riggles. Uh, the groom's name was Anthony Brown, and, and Scott Riggles was like, I think I know that guy. I think I went to high school with him. And he was right. As we return to live action, another mistake from Dallas. Can the Radicals pounce and take control here? Because the Roughnecks certainly look very shaky. Near the goal line, Seth Meyer gets the reset and a drop. It was Josh Wilson, the throw a little behind him, but off his paw. And now a deep shot testing Wilson. Thomas Slack, the target. And that's incomplete. The wind caused that disc to drop off a little unexpectedly. I think Slack was surprised the way that disc went. Scully unable to keep it alive. And a timeout called from the Madison sideline. Radicals get the timeout. The O-line will return to the field. It's a one goal lead, but it's a two break lead for Tim DeBiles' team. The owner and coach of the Radicals, Wisconsin class of 1996. You look at what he has done in this ultimate community building, not just this roster and the innovative strategies we've seen from the Radicals through the years, a team that playing its 75th game today as a franchise is 63 and 11 all time, 57 and seven in the regular season. But you look around at the beer garden behind the players there and the fans in the stands. It is a incredible spectacle, as good as any in the league here in Madison, Wisconsin. Obviously, we talk more about Tim DeBile as a coach of the Madison Radicals, but he is also an owner, and so creating this experience falls under his jurisdiction. It's incredible how well he wears both hats um, to make such a wonderful home game experience and then also be such an interesting innovator in the realm of the, the AUDL. You know, he was the first one to, to really push the envelope with the double team, and that was so interesting to see the possibilities that could come about from the slightly different rules uh, in the AUDL. Tom Annan with the disc. Gets the reset to Nelson, back to Annan. Shrywise, Wiseman, Riggles, Barker, and Camp are also out there. Jay Frude roaming defensively, and he comes up with a D. You know, this has to be an emotional game for Jay. He was a fan favorite here the last couple of years. He's played so well so far this season for Dallas. And really, you know, he's one of the reasons that this Dallas team could lose so many key players from last year, like Bo Kittredge, Cassidy Rasmussen, Jeremy Langdon, to a lesser extent, Ted Barnett. And they still are unquestionably a contender for a championship. Head coach Patrick Eberly on the active roster tonight. This is Bennett, looking long, testing Riggles. And that's a dangerous idea. Riggles turned 34 this past April. He said he was reluctant to come back. He attended the first game of the season as a fan with his Almost two-year-old son, Aiden. It's not quite like pulling a fan out of the stands because he's got a pretty good ultimate resume. And he's six foot seven and faster than lightning. 
Barker to Wiseman. Slithers that pass through to space. Nelson, power position. And to the end zone, forcing the layout, but Annan makes the catch. What a great string of throws that led Madison to that to that end zone play. Nelson really able to milk that throw for some yardage, and he has just an easy forehand put, albeit it falls a little short. Um, Could have used a little more float. <laughs> Right. That's the second great grab that Annan has made. One on the leap, the other on the bid. Final minute here in the first quarter. There have been more breaks than holds thus far, Megan. I know, it's been exciting and surprising. I really thought that um, it, it would take a little while for Madison to develop some defensive rhythm. As I was saying earlier, without Meshnik here to help put on that that definitive uh, two-person cup. It was surely going to take them a little bit while to kind of develop a rhythm against this Dallas squad, but uh, they've been pretty quick to generate and capitalize on opportunities. We played eight points so far, and six of them have been breaks. Madison jumped out two zip. Dallas scored the next three, and then Madison has scored three in a row, and we're down to the final 10 seconds here in the quarter. It's Coffin in the red zone. And right down the middle to Stanley Peterson. 4.7 seconds on the clock. Cool clockwork offense from the defending champs. You saw Madison start to push themselves back to the end zone, assuming that a bigger throw would have to go up, leaving Peterson all alone at the very front line of the end zone. Off into Peterson with four seconds to go. Certainly the Radicals have some size for this last second situation. Sending Wiseman, Riggles, KPS. All onto the offensive line. Jimmy Mickle will be out there with Dan, Dan Emmons, Jay Frude, Jason Holleran and others. Radicals will get the disc to start the second quarter. And that wow. did not roll out of bounds. It was a perfect pull. Wiseman winds up. KPS with an athletic tip to the end zone, but Mikkel intercepts. Pretty gutsy, bold play there from KPS. It almost worked. It almost worked. I, I was shocked as soon as I saw Mikkel's pull go up. I thought there's no way that they're going to get even close to the end zone, but uh, very clever play from KPS. Entertaining 12 minutes in the books. We'll take a short break. One down, three to go in the Cross Coast Challenge here in Madison. Radicals up by one of the defending champs.
It's a great crowd on a wonderful Saturday night here in Madison, Wisconsin. The Radicals five, the Roughnecks four, as we groove into the second quarter at Bree Stevens Field. They're your plus minus leaders in the AUDL heading into week 10. Jay Frude and Dylan Freechild of the Roughnecks, number one and number three respectively. The former Roughneck, Jeremy Langdon, for now for the Jacksonville Cannons is in the two spot. And how about the South Division? Atlanta's Matt Smith is fourth in the league in plus minus. We're at the point of the season, Megan, where there's starting to be some conversations about all AUDL teams and MVP. This is gonna be the toughest year I think we've ever had to decide because a lot of players are having great years and few guys are separating themselves from the pack the way we saw Dylan Tunnell, Misha Freystadter do last year, the way we've seen Bo Kittredge do in the past. A lot of very competitive divisional races as well. There's no question about that. The, the talent pool is, is widening. Uh, as teams become more experienced, players become more dynamic. Um, it is very difficult to start pointing people out because each team has their own stars in their own right. Colin Camp's pass not intended for Ben Nelson, but that's where it ended up. Trywise to Annan. Dalton Smith bidding defensively. Annan gets the reset to Shrywise. Cross field. That's Barker. Colin Camp had the pleasure of hosting Jimmy Mickle last night. They were teammates on Next Gen, and I believe Jimmy stayed on Colin's couch. As Madison with a clean hold. In the first quarter, we saw six breaks and three holds. Second quarter begins a little more normally. I was really impressed with Madison's offense at that point. Um, you know, the point could have been over at the very beginning, but thankfully the wind lifted that disc on to Nelson to save it. From there, they did a great job of making sure they took a quick second look to make sure all lanes were open. They took a cup, couple of slightly riskier passes, but it did a great job of keeping Dallas defense way on their heels. Annan to Nelson for the score. And now Graffy back out there to pull. It's worth mentioning, Megan, the, the owners of these two teams did make a friendly wager on this game. And I believe the terms are as follows. Jim Garrenser for Dallas, Tim DeBile for Madison. The loser of the game has to make their Facebook profile picture, the other team's logo, oh, that's good. for three days. That's really good. Neither owner wants to do that. Mickel shooting long, and Coolidge deflects it away. Intended for Coffin, but Thomas Coolidge got there first. You know, I think Coolidge plays his best when the stakes are at the highest. The best I've ever seen him play was championship weekend two years ago, where we, he absolutely was on fire. Out in San Jose, he made several spectacular plays. Contact downfield will give a free 10-yard march to Logan Pruce. Pettit Scantling on the under. Back to Pruce. Now in his second year on the Radicals, he had a great debut season in 2016. Everhart to KPS, cross midfield. Now he wants it all. To the end zone, defended by Slack. And Thomas Slack showing off the speed some of the Roughnecks have said that he is the fastest guy on their roster. And when you think about the caliber of talent on their roster, that's pretty high praise. But after watching that play, it wouldn't surprise me in the least. Malachek gets it through to Mickle. This is where Free Child so dangerous. Just hanging in the air near the sideline, but Free Child runs it down. A former Oregon standout. Sacrifices 15 yards, gets it back to Mickle. And now Malachek. Malachek. 
Malachek, four years of high school in Madison, five years of college ultimate in Madison. And the Radicals cannot stop the Roughnecks there. 6-5 as Dallas holds. Brandon Malachek said he played 10 plus years in summer league in Madison. He was twice reprimanded and once suspended during that tenure because he played with more than one roster during each summer in the competitive and recreation divisions and guys weren't allowed to do that. Yeah, some people just can't get enough ultimate. Coffin from Malachek to get Dallas back within one. This is the toughest remaining game on Dallas's schedule, no question. After today, they only will have four games left and they don't leave the state of Texas again. Game against Austin, Atlanta, and Jacksonville all at home and then they have one game in Austin mid-July to wrap up their regular season. They're in a race with Raleigh. Jacksonville as well, very much in the thick of that conversation in the South, especially if the Cannons could get a win on Raleigh's home field tonight. Now Dallas looking to break. You can hear Mickle from the sidelines yelling vertical, wanting the Roughnecks to get in the vertical stack. That low throw kept alive. And the officials say it was incomplete. So Madison will take over. Low throw to Holleran could not be dug out. Good spirit by Dylan Freechild. He was one of the, the roughnecks pointing to the ground, indicating that it was down. Let's see. It's close. Referees all came together. Officials tonight, John Thibodeau, Jeff Maxted, Becky Ladane, and Dan Lorela with Todd Eisenberg in the booth running the clock. So it will be Madison's disc. It's Brown. Riggles. Stall count rising. Riggles just launches. And that will be a turnover. He had nowhere to go. Get it back, was it, I think it was a stall call. They did call the stall as well. So Dallas will get it back from the point of Riggle's release. Free child will take over. Free child, too tall. It just kept on rising over Bacon. is not awful tonight, but it is a little gusty. I don't think Dylan took that into account when he let off that inside out flick. That's always very risky to throw in this kind of wind. It, as we saw, can very easily sail too high for your intended receiver. This is Camp to Barker. Of course, Barker made arguably the play of college nationals last week, a greatest against the University of Oregon. Made it onto the Sports Center top 10. Riggles thought about the deep shot. Weaves that backhand through to Shrywise. Flip it up high, Riggles. Shrywise, nice. Nelson in the end zone. Earlier on the point, you saw Matt Bennett on the mark trying to double team Riggles by jumping up in the air. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's his best strategy against Scott Riggles. There's very little hope to take everything away from a 6'7 Scott Riggles. And Trywise with a, a throw that Bennett has specialized for the assist. The scuber over all the traffic. Yeah, Madison eager to show Dallas that they're not the only ones with the fancy throws. Man, you see the smoke rising from the food truck over there. It smells smell good. Smell it, smell it. It's 
quite the party here at Bree Stevens, midway through the second quarter. First assist for Shrywise. Ben Nelson, two goals and an assist early on. Already had a couple lead changes. Dallas came back from an early two goal deficit, led three to two. Madison surged back in front, five to three. Here's Mickle. Slack. Smith. And now Mickle. Pretty good patience here from the Roughnecks. Many of the Dallas players traveled this morning. Mickle was in Cincinnati for college nationals last week and just stayed in the Midwest hanging out. Spent time with his friend Colin Camp. You know, last week at college nationals, during an elimination round, Jimmy Mickle was filming a women's consolation game. When he could have been watching, he, he chose to help out Fulcrum Media and film Women's College Ultimate, a game that didn't matter in the determination of a national champion. Mickle leading Dallas down the field to make it 7-6. Told by our producer Luke Johnson that Mickle actually filmed four games. Well, yes, he which, did. If you didn't know this already about Mickle, in addition to being an amazing player, he's also a really nice guy. Mazer with the score for Dallas. I saw Jimmy last night, and he basically looked at me and said, I see you again? <laughs> because that's Jimmy and I have found each other over the past six weeks. Feels like every weekend. Whether it's the AUDL or Team USA practice or college nationals, I'm sure he's thinking about me even I when, think when he's, he's stalking you. Yeah. I think that's the issue. Or vice versa. <laughs> Jimmy's one of the good guys in ultimate. And he can play, I think, is the understatement of the year. There's contact by Freechild, and he's immediately apologetic. Coolidge undeterred. You know, it's interesting, Megan, so far through the first 20 minutes of action, 22 minutes of action, it doesn't feel like there's a huge athleticism difference between these two teams. Absolutely not. And I don't think that anyone thought there would be. Both teams are known for their dynamic players. And yet that throw didn't hang up long enough for Annan. And it's Shrywise, who's a little shaken up. He's going to call an injury and come off the field. Here's the contact with Freechild. He was right there. And that's not a dirty play. Not at all. And he certainly could have made that worse by leaving his feet in a dangerous manner. Hope Pat Shrywise is all right. The Radicals have, have been dealing with tons of injuries through the first half of the season. Both Shrywise and Annan have missed time. Kevin Brown not in the lineup tonight because of a heel bruise that he suffered last week early in the Madison game against Chicago. Roughnecks in search of the equalizer here. Frood picked up by Graffy. And great anticipation as Matt Jackson's throw knocked down by Andrew Brown. What he lacks in speed and athleticism, he makes up in experience and guile. That's his first D of the year. I gotta wonder if Jackson's injury had anything to do with the execution of that throw. Bookends for Brown. Madison able to hold on the back of Andrew Brown.
Wiseman didn't have anything on the open side, so he had to go over everything. He saw him look down the open side a number of times and then expand his view as the stall count was rising. Saw Brown all alone. Knew he could just put some nice outside in on a throw, put it high enough so that it went over the entire Dallas Ruckneck squad right into the hands of Andrew Brown. Well, there's certainly some indecision there for Matt Jackson who threw that turnover. If you remember, earlier in the season in their first meeting with Raleigh, the Roughnecks captain, Matt Jackson, the guy who played every single game for them last year, broke his arm, winding up a backhand. It was fractured in several places. The now famous Dallas doctor, Chris Miller, helped to get him back healthy, and he returned to the field pretty fast, playing lefty. I believe that was his first throw as a righty. He did get cleared to throw right-handed this past week. Said he wasn't really sure whether he was going to go lefty or righty. It certainly has impacted his game over the past month. He's played largely because the Roughnecks have needed bodies, needed speed. Mickle was looking for Peterson, didn't have an angle. So he'll slice it across field and free child, this time getting the better of Coolidge. As you can see, a great crowd here in Madison, but the Roughnecks able to strike. Coffin to Peterson to make it 8-7. 226 remaining in the half. Meaning no offense to the other handlers in the Midwest. I think the comfort with which Dallas throws hammers and scoobers is going to be a tricky point for Madison the entirety of this game. I don't think they have set up their defenses to account for the number of times that Dallas will throw that easily, comfortably for the score. I think you're absolutely right. That is a vulnerability. That's, I mean, that's the throw Madison wants them to launch. And in the conditions of the Midwest, often very windy, and with the defensive personnel they have, they encourage those throws. I mean, a couple years ago on this field, we saw Tyler DiGirolamo slice and dice the Madison defense with his over-the-top throws. DiGirolamo still nursing a groin injury. It's possible he could return to the field this weekend, though, for Pittsburgh. Testing Wiseman, going deep. The referees blow the whistle. Wiseman going up with Joel Clutton. Let's take a look. Yeah, Clutton, Clutton got, got it first. first. Joel Clutton in just his second game as a roughneck makes a big play on the deep shot, intercepting the huck to Wiseman. Timeout in the field, Dallas Disc, when we come back, they're looking to tie it up. Joel Clutton, Callahan nominee for the University of Texas in 2016. Played 10 games for the Austin Soul last year. Was a fairly high profile signee for Dallas when they picked him up in the off season. Unfortunately, he hasn't made much of an impact throughout the season until perhaps tonight. Skying Wiseman for the D. And now Dallas within one. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. Evan Lepler, Megan Tormey, 
with you from Bree Stevens Field as Malachek drops a beautiful flick. Jimmy Mickle, the easy clap catch, and it's eight all. I really love Malachek as a handler. He's someone who can take a step back and just help dictate some good offensive movement with his throws, but he can also take over the point and deliver a dime, just like we saw him do to Mickle. He's been making throws like this for a long time. Mazur swinging it to space, and he just put this in the perfect spot for Jimmy. So that's a break. In fact, it's the first break of this second quarter. Matt Bennett launches the pull. Camp. Back to Nelson. Still no Pat Trywise on the field. We'll try to get an update on Madison's cutter. Annan shoots. Nelson's got it. That looked like a blown assignment. Nelson was completely uncontested. That's his third goal of the half. Nelson grew up here in Madison, went to Tufts. Back here in his hometown and making an impact. Just over 20 seconds off the clock on that possession. Annan recognized it and just floated it to space. Madison beginning a huge stretch in their season, a three-week stretch, Megan, that could obviously determine whether they're hosting a playoff game or whether they are on the road for perhaps one or two playoff games in their quest to return to championship weekend. That shot intended for Holleran, excuse me, Marshall, defended by Hart. That was Meyer with the D. He was very quick to recognize. You're right. That hammer was going up so speedy, so quick at closing the gap there. Yeah, he's been praised for his anticipation for a long time. 35 seconds and ticking. Looking to the end zone for Kanaki. He's got it! A huge break what? for the Radicals. That was an incredible grab. Knowing he had two Dallas defenders on his back, he went up early, he went up high, and he came down with that. Wiseman gave him a chance to make the play. Andrew Brown said something to me before the game. He said, in the preseason, everyone talked about us losing Jay Frude. No one talked about us adding Sterling Kanaki. And he thinks Kanaki could be that type of player. Well, with plays like that, it won't take long for that to become the bigger storyline than losing Jay Frood. Just under 30 seconds to go. It would be gigantic if Madison could get a D here. Malachek fields the pull. Mazer, free child. Smith, Coffin, Slack, and Marshall also out there, and Malachek dropped it. Timeout, Madison. Tim DeBile calmly makes the signal from the sidelines. 16 seconds on the official stadium clock. And the Radicals with a chance to take their largest lead yet. The Madison sideline is fired up. You saw Meyer put his hands on his head in despair. He was all alone close to the end zone when DeBile called that timeout. But DeBile, known for a cool head, is undoubtedly making the right call. Tim DeBile 
founded uh, found Ultimate in his late 20s when one of his co-workers invited him to play Summer League. It was a Summer League team, it turned out, that was run by a handful of guys in their 40s who were critical in bringing the World Championships here to Madison back in 1993. Fast forward about 16 years, and one of the great names in Ultimate, Georgia Bosher, wife of Pat Triwise, member of the Team USA World Games team, Georgia basically approached Tim and asked, how would you feel about coaching the University of Wisconsin women's B team? They were trying to get that program off the ground. Tim DeBile accepted the offer, began coaching a team with five or six women. They had Sandy Jorgensen for about two hours before she got bumped up to the A team. They went out to trouble in Vegas. Their first tournament, they were seated 52nd out of 52 teams. They won all their games on Saturday and finished eighth in the tournament. DeBile really enjoyed that experience coaching women's ultimate for a couple years. First throw out of the timeout. DeBile won't like that. Intercepted by Mickle. And Bennett to Coffin with six seconds. Coffin shoots it to the end zone, wriggles the defender nearby, and he eats it up. And that is how the first half will end. All things considered, Madison, while perhaps disappointed, they couldn't convert at the end. The Radicals win the first quarter five to four, and they win the second quarter five to four. 10-8 Madison here at the half. Your thoughts? Madison has a lot to be very proud of. I do think they came out in this game mentally prepared, mentally in charge. With two breaks to start the game, they dictated the speed, the pace of this game, and they've been able to match that intensity point by point. Well played first half for the Radicals. They lead by two at the half here at Bree Stevens Field. recognition is critical, teaches middle school PE classes about ultimate frisbee and cancer symptom awareness. We're a registered nonprofit that advocates for an active, healthy lifestyle, body awareness, and speaking up if something is wrong. Skills and when it comes to cancer can help save a life. Ultimate is a fast-paced team sport that's self-referee, non-contact, and co-ed. Spirit of the game is the foundation of Ultimate. That means we communicate respectfully, we're fair-minded, and we enjoy the game. Ultimate is accessible to everyone. All you need is a Frisbee and some friends. Our team of coaches is made up of experienced and passionate leaders from the Ultimate community. We can come to your middle school and run your PE classes for the day. And if we're not in your area yet, we'll send you our clinic in a box where we give you the resources to run your own. We are Eric! And we want to work with you and your school. Great crowd on hand here at Bree Stevens Field. And at the half, it's Madison 10 and Dallas 8 on a warm Saturday night in early June, one of the warmest nights they've had in Madison yet this summer. She's Megan Tormey. I am Evan Lepler. And when you look at this first half, the pace is Madison's. And that's what stands out the most to me. Yeah, I thought that Dallas would be the one dictating the speed and Madison would be hard charge to try and keep up, but they were the ones who set the tone early. And like I said, they've been able to keep up their own intensity every single point. Yeah, it's been a lot of back and forth ultimate, but the, the wind tunnels at this field are different. The Dallas Roughnecks entering the day in second place. We're gonna run through all four division standings here. Dallas, 
trailing Raleigh by a half game. Of course, those two teams split their season series. Then you have Jacksonville, who still has one more game at Dallas. Cannon's got a big win in Atlanta last week. It's a fascinating three-team race atop this division. And the more people I talk to, Megan, they seem to think it might be Raleigh's year, and Dallas could be the underdog if that's possible. I agree. After watching Raleigh play D.C., there's something about this squad that when they get on a run, they are absolutely unstoppable. Um, it's a full team dynamic that's really working for them. In the Midwest, of course, the only remaining undefeated team in the league, Minnesota. They also happen to be the only team out of 24 that is off on this particular weekend. Madison in second. Pittsburgh, tough doubleheader weekend. They're on the road uh, at Chicago tonight and at Indy tomorrow. Indy got their second win of the season earlier this afternoon by beating Detroit. In the other divisions in the league, we'll take a look at the East. It's a two-team race at the top right now with Toronto and D.C. Montreal got a great road win last night over Ottawa. And perhaps the most confounding team in the league, New York with gobs of talent. But they're sitting at 2-4 and four, and they've got a tough road game at D.C. tomorrow. I have been surprised by New York as well. I really thought that they would be up there, the top. Uh, it would be an interesting matchup between D.C. and New York, but they just have not been able to put together their talent the same way that D.C. has. And out west, San Jose at 6-1, and one, maybe the biggest surprise of the league. Seattle's at 4-1. and one. In the west division, you got San Diego and L.A. on the road this weekend. L.A. is in the Bay Area taking on San Jose today. San Francisco tomorrow. San Diego is up in the Pacific Northwest. Vancouver and Seattle, their opponents. Next weekend, the AUDL on 11 Sports Network and AUDL.TV will bring you two games, both from the West Coast. Seattle at San Diego on Friday night and Seattle and LA on Saturday. And in that West Division, I don't think anyone knows what's gonna happen. And that's what I think the AUDL has been pushing towards since the very beginning. Um, a list of teams so talented, you don't know who's going to end, out up on, end up on top. And so it's just exciting and exhilarating to watch the entire season. We're halfway through tonight. Madison leads Dallas 10-8. to eight. When we come back, we'll show you some of the greatest plays in week nine in the AUDL. That is next as our coverage here in Madison continues. So this piece with, the, with Eric is amazing to me. It's right in line with what we I think is critical for kids, and that is to know their bodies. The kids have really gotten into um, having speakers here that aren't just their teachers. And I think the clinicians did a fantastic job. All the kids were engaged, uh, none of them were distracted. They seemed to get into it right away. I just want to reach out to Eric and tell him, you know, thank you for coming and sharing the message that our kids can speak up. Uh, early recognition is critical, and I look forward to doing more things with Eric in the future. It's been great for us as a staff and for our students to experience uh, the message you guys have and um, highly recommend it for any school that has the opportunity. The official score. So the Empire here could bring it back within one. There's still Rico Johnson, a layout on Jeff Babbitt. And what looked like a break turns into a Del Rico Johnson piece of magic. The goal for
line. Now the one, two. Garvey, a fancy piece of magic there. Welcome back to Madison, Wisconsin, where the Radicals lead the Roughnecks 10 to 8, about ready for the start of the third quarter on a nine-game Saturday night in the AUDL, a 15-game Week 10. Some good games going on right now, including D.C. and Philadelphia, a one-goal game in the third quarter at Philly. There's Pat Trywise. We've been told he's questionable to return, aggravating a back injury that has bothered him throughout the season. Plenty of plays in that first half, though. Dylan Freechild doing a lot on both sides of the disc. We saw Tom Annan make a couple big-time grabs. Scoobers from both sides. Really entertaining 24 minutes of ultimate. Yeah, a lot of highlights, a lot to watch, and a lot of excitement and intensity from both teams. Great crowd on hand to see it as well. The margins for some of these throwing windows are very, very small. I've been impressed with the handler defense, especially from both sides. Yeah, we've seen opportunities taken away uh, on both sides. I think Madison has been really good at marking the handlers, Dallas's handlers really well, sometimes getting these, sometimes just taking away opportunities. Um, and that has, has slowed Dallas's usually frenzy-paced offense quite a bit. Ben Nelson, three goals for the Radicals. And how about the half Sterling Kanaki had, the Radicals rookie played one game for Madison last year, but in his first year as a full-time member of the team. Kanaki comes from a competitive swimming background. He still coaches high school swimming. Just an ultra-competitive guy, and you can see that in his demeanor on the field. These are two competitive teams. This is going to be one fun second half as Graffy gets us going. Malachek, who had the drop in the final point, didn't cost the Roughnecks. Didn't help them either. No, I'll be interested to see what both teams do adjustment-wise since I think, uh, in general, both their offense and defense is functioning well. It's just the intensity is matched beautifully on the opposite side of the fence. Nichols slices the flick to Marshall. To Slack. And Slack was bumped on the mark. You know, Slack and Marshall, two guys that each scored a ton of goals last year. Those two guys combined for 95 goals. The two of them combined basically pulled one Freistadter. Quick hold for the Dallas Roughnecks as Abe Coffin punches it in. And it's 10 to 9. 42 seconds off the clock in the third. Some good, clean offense from Dallas, but certainly nothing alarming, nothing that Madison has not yet seen um, and hasn't been able to deal with almost handily. Chris Mazur able to punch it in. Now, Chris
Chris Mazur began playing ultimate at the University of Miami. He was walking back from a baseball tryout. He had dreams of walking on to the Miami Hurricanes baseball team. Great time for college baseball. The College World Series underway with regionals around the country. He said his baseball career didn't last too long. He saw some older guys playing pickup. It turns out it was the Miami Refugees Masters team that had just won a world title in Finland. And he immediately saw the flight of the disc. He was hooked. He went to a tournament. He was hooked. They didn't really have a team in Miami at that time, though. When they finally put a team together, Chris Mazur's team went 0-5 at sectionals, their first tournament. That's Barker. Back to camp. Swings it. Coolidge and Camp. Madison knows if they can hold with smooth offense, they're going to be in great shape. Yeah, that was some very nice movement between Camp and Coolidge, working together, keeping their eyes on one another. Camp very cleverly tossed the disc and immediately tried to make himself a viable cut. Now, it could have easily not gone off, gone off, but that awareness made for an easy score. Colin Camp leading the Radicals so far this year with 20 goals. Colin Camp is one of seven players who had played in each of Madison's first six games entering tonight. A couple of those guys not active this evening though. Andrew Meshnick, the defensive star, and Marquise Mason, the former University of Wisconsin wideout who has had some growing pains. He's at the game tonight, I got to chat with Marquise, asked him what moment he's most proud of from his first six games of Pro Ultimate, what moment he's most embarrassed by. As Marshall launching for Mickle, and he's in. Ty Marshall on the throwing end. 11-10 the score. The, the answer from Mason, he went to the most embarrassing moment first. He said he got posterized by Indy's Travis Carpenter in the picture. He was just kind of staring up, looking at him as Carpenter, who we know can, can fly, was defying gravity in an impressive way. Well, yeah. Mason should take heart in knowing he is not the only person in that club who that has is, uh, been left feeling that way after Carpenter scored. That is very, very true. Not much time at all going off the clock on that point. Mickle from Marshall. Official timeout to check the clock. I don't believe they ever started it during that last point. Thankfully, they can just take a 10, 15 seconds off the clock. And frankly, I don't think anyone would object to more Roughnecks Radicals. Let these guys play for a while. Game to 100, Who, who's in? I would certainly call that game, as long as it is exhilarating as the first two quarters and two minutes of this game. We might need a good meal at 50. <laughs> if we could get some cheese curds at 50. I don't think getting a good meal at Bree Stevens Field is a difficult task to accomplish. No, they've got great grub here. Got to enjoy a bunch of it during championship weekend last season. Officially, 10 minutes, 38 seconds on the third quarter clock. Dallas scoring in 17 seconds on that last point. Roughnecks were off last weekend. They beat Atlanta by eight. A game they were down at the half in two weeks ago on a Sunday. To bounce back from the two road losses on May 12th and 13th in Jacksonville and Raleigh. Dallas, of course, 17-0 last year. The franchise 24-2 all time. Camp to Riggles. And he's in. Riggles acutely aware of where the end zone line is. Takes a quick glance at the disc, down at the ground, makes the hop to make sure that he's in the end zone. Megan, what do you make of the fact that in the first quarter we played nine points and saw six breaks, and since then we have played 13 points and there have been just one break? 
I think both teams are starting to become aware of the other team's potential, and so they're settling to, into their roles a little more definitively. I think Dallas is now very prepared for Madison to try and take the disc away from them. Um, Notice just a little bit of alteration in the way that they were running their offense. They started going um, a little bit wider, using more of the field, making it slightly more difficult for Madison to get an easy break um, because they know that Madison's going to try and capitalize on that opportunity. I think it's a great point. We've seen some critical adjustments from both teams' O-lines. Malachek hits Mickle, KPS on the mark. Cross field, Coffin. Slack, back to Coffin. Abe was a radical last couple years. Sneaks it through to Mickle. High blade, and Abe on the brink of the end zone. He's doubled. And sneaks it through to Mickle. How did that disc get there? To a lesser man, that would have been a D. To Jimmy Mickle, it's a score. I mean, when that disc left Coffin's hands, it looked like it was going to get knocked away. There were four Madison hands. And I, I think Everhart got a piece of it. Fortunately, not enough for Madison. It can be scary in the AUDL, when you're that close to the end zone, you're double teamed near the sideline, you've faked a couple times, and then all of a sudden that radar goes off. Crap, what's the stall count at? Because the defender isn't counting it, it is a silent stall. All of a sudden it's five or six and you only get seven. I have to think that that is the single most difficult part of transitioning to the AUDL. You're so accustomed to having an audible stall count. And there have been times where I have been, someone has put a stall count on me and it's not until five and six that I even hear her counting. Sure. And at that point, it's usually a fast count. <laughs> well, at that point, I'm looking for the dump, but yeah, to not have any clue where you are, so dangerous. There was contact on the mark. Frude tripping his former teammate Wiseman. For the guy who's leading the league in plus minus, Frude has had a pretty quiet night as the Radicals continue to use the hammer over the top. Nelson to Scullion, 13-11. Madison is typically such a disciplined offense. They always look smooth, calm, confident. I, it was so interesting to me to watch their game against Minnesota where they were down the entire game. And in the last minutes of the game, they started to realize their impending loss and really started to open up. Uh, they were taking far more risky shots and they weren't always connecting, but it was interesting to see players who you've always seen kind of make the wise choice start to get a little more intense, uh, showing a little bit more of the breadth of their, their potential, their capacity. Downfield, Dallas has Coffin, Slack, Mickle, and Marshall. Free Child, Mazer, and Malachek, the three handlers at the outset. Lots of traffic in the center of the field right here. Dallas, of course, enjoyed playing on this field a year ago, won a championship here in Madison. They beat Toronto on Saturday and then surpassed Seattle on Sunday to cap off their perfect season. Free child. Makes it look easy. Saw that option to him for about five, six <laughs> seconds, and finally he saw it. I was chatting with Casey Hogg prior to the game and 
asked him, you know, what what's the plan against Madison's double team? What are you guys going to do? And he didn't want to give me any specifics, but he hinted that that quick movement between handlers down the middle of the field is what they were aiming to do. He said, if you see our handlers pushed against the sideline, that is not what we wanted. And you can see why that is so important for them to continue to do against the Madison double team, because it really makes it difficult for Madison to lock them down. They've been doing a good job of trying to step through that double team, just get a little bit past the defense, and then it's just plinkoing down the field. Jimmy Mickle now with three goals here in this third quarter. Four goals for the game. Seven thirty-seven remaining here in the third. Madison 13, Dallas 12. The string of holds back and forth. When will we see a break? Andrew Brown gets the offense started. Brown six days shy of his 36th birthday. Have to think he'll be talking a lot about that bookends he had earlier tonight, later tonight. Colin Camps, the downfield workhorse, former Wisconsin Hodag, obviously a lot of University of Wisconsin products on this team. Thomas Coolidge, part of that crew, and so is Tom Annan, who shoots it to camp. Colin Camp gets there. Tom Annan serves it up on a platter. That was a beauty of a throw. Really shows the awareness he has for his teammates' athletic ability. For a moment, I thought perhaps it was just out of the reach of Camp. Camp, no doubt, had faith at all times he was going to get that. Second goal of the quarter and third of the night for Camp who had 36 goals a season ago. Now in his third AUDL season from Hopkins, Minnesota. Camp has not been immune from injury either. He's had several surgeries throughout his athletic upbringing, but feeling fast tonight. Wide open downfield, Marshall. Floats this one up high, and it's knocked away. Free child could not get it over Kanaki. Feels like the first turnover we've had in quite a while. It certainly has, and getting a D on Dylan Freechild is something I think Kanaki can add to his resume. Can Madison work it 60 yards and punch it in? Graffy and Hart. A two-man game. These are the situations Graffy really thirsts for when he can take charge and quarterback this line. And that's a mistake by Hart. Nobody was going long. Maybe he thought Graffy was going, maybe Kanaki, but no one took off. I think he thought perhaps Graffy was going all the same. I think it was ill-advised given how many Dallas players were well within the, the arena to make a play on that disc. Everhart fouled Malachek on the mark. Low throw, it's up. Great grab by Coffin. Couple turnovers have risen the intensity a little bit here in this third quarter. Over the top, beautiful. Coffin held the hand in the air like Reggie Miller after draining a couple threes in a row against the New York Knicks. Roughnecks back within one after each team turned at once. Lot to digest on that point. Ending with Marshall in the end zone. Certainly for a second we thought we were going to see a break from Madison. No doubt 
That was the kind of play DeBile was concerned about at the beginning of this game. He said he wanted to make sure that the defense was doing its best to convert those opportunities. That, just an unfortunate error from Madison, took away that opportunity to further their lead. Closing in on five minutes to go in the quarter. That disc floating up there. Annan able to haul it in. Tom Annan was the first radical. The first phone call that Tim DeBile made when he began recruiting players after the franchise became official. He knew that Annan was a guy everyone respected. Knew that if he could get Tom Annan on board, others would follow, and he was right. A lot of contact in the middle of the field, and that'll be a pick. Hard to miss. Coolidge, Peterson, Lewis, and Nelson all colliding. Madison back 10 yards. Quickly regains it, but, well, no, a timeout was called. Thought we were going to see a delay of game because of the referees not initiating play, but a timeout called by Tim DeBile. Sensing the importance of this moment, 4.07 remaining in the third quarter, Megan. And these are just two heavyweight fighters counterpunching right now, trading barbs. You wonder what will be the knockout punch. Right, and one thing you have to know if you've watched any game of Dallas is that they are perfectly fine from a mental standpoint being down most of the game. I can't count how many times we've seen them down only to come back with a ferocity in the fourth quarter. So DeBile's very wise to take a moment, get his team to put their heads back on their shoulders, take a breather, relax just a little bit, because he knows it's crucial for them to hold the lead they have, simply because Dallas doesn't see it as an intimidating lead at all. Certainly everyone here in Madison rem remembers what happened last year. The Radicals as a team have 24 returning players from a year ago. 15 of those players have been with the team since the franchise's inception. So they've had some turnover. Some guys have retired. Some guys have moved on. They've brought some new guys in. This year, obviously, Kanaki and Barker have been great new additions. Logan Proust was a new addition last year. Proust swings it across the field to Scullion. And now Coolidge. Pruce. Everhart to Graffy. Floating it to Pettit Scantling. Tipped away and deed up by Emmons. Dan Emmons returning to the field comes up with a tremendous deflection. KPS giving the home crowd hope on that second effort, that second attempt bid, but the disc was out of bounds. Now Dallas trying to march 80 yards downfield for the break. Bennett to Frude. Inbound, what a catch by Frude. As if Madison needed one more reason to miss Jay Frude, they just saw it. 14 all as Dallas breaks. First break of the half for either team. And how about the awareness from Frood? Back of the end zone on the shot from Bennett. Not only the awareness, but the athleticism to be able to keep your toes in bounds after you've been going at full tilt. Oh, what a catch. <laughs> that a six, seven foot drag mark. I think when he takes his cleats off after the game, there might be some rubber There's pellets. There's undoubtedly pellets in his cleats. Madison looking to respond. Colin Camp could not come up with it. 
Free child and slack there defensively. And now Dallas, a chance to take the lead. What do you think of that shot there from Wiseman? I think it was just a, a little rushed. The numbers were not in their favor for sure. Certainly not, and, I, and, and this is something that we can see, have seen from Madison from time to time in these high stakes games that if they think for a second they're losing their edge, they might put up something ill-advised. This is Clutton to Holleran. Those two were teammates in the Austin Soul a year ago. Free child trying to quarterback the Roughnecks into the lead. Not a ton of defensive pressure here from Madison. Dallas has not led since it was three to two. Radicals certainly making the Roughnecks work for it, clogging up space downfield. Dallas illustrating patience. Clutton back to slack. Flipping it up high, and Clutton skies over Annan. Dallas takes the lead, 15-14 here in the third. Certainly a tall order to ask someone to guard a 6-5 receiver. But you saw Annan looking to decide to jump, and Clutton was already in the air. Maybe Thomas Slack would want that throw back, but it worked out. Big point for Clutton, free child with a great D on camp. Good spirit to help up in and after the contact. It's a tough break for Madison. Hard to say that should have been a foul on Clutton. Yes, he went over Annan. I don't know. He, he Do you have any, any thoughts there? I, I think he went up first. He occupied his own space. He, because he went up so early, he really had the first play on the disc, even though, like you said, he went over Tom's head. Madison, a little shaky. Mickle, Smith, and Bennett. Jackson, Marshall, Emmons, and Lewis also on the field for Dallas. Roughnecks have not led by multiple scores at any point during the game. Emmons just shy of the goal line, inbounds. Timeout called from the Dallas sideline with 36 seconds to go in this third quarter. The Roughnecks were trailing 14-12. They've scored three in a row and they're looking for another. Dallas with momentum on the road here in Madison. Dallas up by one and looking for more. Megan Tormey, has this 3-0 run been more about Dallas in your mind or has it been more about Madison? I think it's been more about Madison. They're starting to lose their edge. They're starting to lose the calm that they had at the beginning of this game. And even through that calm, the dictation with which they stepped onto the field. Um, as I said, in those higher stakes games, when they think they're starting to lose their advantage, lose their edge, they throw something untoward. There's a great crowd of mostly radical supporters here, but they have not had much to cheer for these past couple of minutes. Madison's last goal was with 6.48 to go in the quarter. 
And now it's a two goal lead for the Roughnecks. Smith to Slack, 16-14. Dallas taking control late here in the third. Critical 32 seconds upcoming here for the Madison offense. They have a chance if they could score here. Remember, they will receive at the start of the fourth quarter. Right, and there are few offensive lines who are as calm and as competent across multiple playing venues as the Madison Radicals, um, just so long as players like Tom Annan can can dictate what he wants on the field. And I'm glad to see Shrywise is back out on the field. No doubt everyone else on the radical sideline is eager to see him back out. He was great at developing some good offensive flow from Madison at the beginning of this game. And no doubt if he's feeling good, he'll do the same to kind of regroup Madison as a whole. It is good to see Shrywise back on the field, but delay of game was called, so Dallas will have an extra 10 yards on the pull. Shrywise, Riggles, Camp, Coolidge, Brown, Nelson, and Annan. The seven on the line for the Radicals. Dallas with three breaks in a row. Annan floats it deep. Riggles breaking away. He's still got it. I remember first talking to Tim DeBile about number 12, Scott Riggles. He said, guys that tall aren't supposed to be that fast. Riggles is the exception. Yeah, and just before this game, he was talking about he, how he's no longer the fastest one on the team. But Scott Riggles, even a couple of steps slower, is still an absolutely lethal receiver. Only thing, Megan, did they score too fast? I mean, that just took 11 seconds off the clock. And now Dallas and the Roughnecks explosive offense has a chance. After the first quarter, I, I heard KPS delivering a very impassioned speech to his team talking about how each line elevates the play of the other. So no doubt the defensive line is stepping on knowing that their O-line did them proud. They want to do the same. Mazer, Coffin, Malachek, Mickle, Freechild, Slack, and Marshall. Down to 10 seconds for Marshall. Up the line, Coffin with five to Freechild with three to the end zone with one clockwork. How about that answer from the champs? Still one second on the clock. Malachek the score. That is a punch in the gut on the road. An amazing few seconds of offense from Dallas. You really thought at some point they would have to result, resort to some sort of Hail Mary pass, but the entire time they were in control, it looked like just a normal point. You wouldn't even know it was the end of the quarter. It looks like they drew up the chain exactly how it unfolded. Let's see if Madison can put something together here in the final seconds. Of course, in the final seconds of the third quarter, last year against Seattle, Will Chen had that remarkable 80-yard throw that Seattle's Matt Russell ran down. Jaden Scullion floats the backhand. Mickle takes care of business. Jimmy with his smile on his face and his uncombed hair flopping in the wind. Finishes the third for the Roughnecks as they take a 17-15 lead into the fourth. We've played three, we've got one to go. Jimmy Mickles, Dallas Roughnecks, 12 minutes away from a critical road win here in Madison.
into the fourth quarter here at Breeze Stevens Field, just northeast of the Madison State Capitol. It's the oldest playing field in Madison. The city purchased the land in 1923. Got a new press box six years ago, got new turf three years ago. And the Radicals hoping they can be the team with the fourth quarter comeback against one of the league's favorites this time around. Madison is on offense to start the fourth, trailing by two. Megan, what are your thoughts as to the keys to Madison here in this fourth quarter? A couple of things. First, on offense, it's really going to come down to Andrew Brown, Tom Annan, um, setting the pace, making sure that they're not trying to force anything. With multiple throws, they're going to be able to work it down to the disc without issue. On defense, I think they've got to pick up the intensity, pick up the pressure. They're doing a good job of taking away opportunities downfield, but I would like to see them tighten up their offensive, or the, excuse me, their defensive pressure on the handlers. Um, when they're on deep. Barker versus Peterson. Victory for Stanley Peterson. We're starting to see Dallas's downfield athletes like Free Child and Peterson and Frude. Jay Frude is too fast. A break for Dallas to kick off the fourth. Roughnecks with their largest lead of the night. Not much to say about that particular throw, just a very pretty put to a very fast receiver. Jay Frude had just 10 goals in seven games for the Radicals last year. He entered today with 33 goals in nine games for Dallas this year, and he has scored several times tonight. The type of guy that has the disc skill that you don't just want to force him underneath because he can do damage with his throws too, but certainly his athleticism as one of the league's leading goal scorers so far this year, really standing out tonight. The defensive line out there on offense for Madison with Hart, Everhart, Pruce, Graffy, Coolidge, Scullion, and Pettit Scantling. And a drop by Bill Everhart. You know, we've seen mistakes become contagious in the AUDL. The game happens so fast. Against a team like Dallas, one or two mistakes can spiral out of control really quickly. Especially when you feel the lead you've had all night is starting to, to dwindle away from you. Dallas takes a timeout. Leading by three with the disc, 10 and a half minutes remaining. Gives us the chance to tell you about what else is happening around the AUDL tonight. A major upset in the city of brotherly love. Just gone final a minute ago. Philadelphia 22, DC 21. The last place Phoenix win at home against the, the Breeze who were tied for first. It's Philly's first win over DC in a couple years. And it dramatically changes the landscape in the East, especially when you consider the fact, Megan, DC has a home game tomorrow against the New York Empire. New York did not play today, so the Empire theoretically will be rested. DC defeated, demoralized, need to bounce back. That's gonna be a really tough game for DC. It always helps to be on your home turf. It always helps to have the crowd cheering you on. But when you have played a game on Saturday and your opponent has been able to rest, even when your opponent has to travel, they automatically have that one leg up on you. Um, also, you've said it before, 
New York has a lot of talent. They really haven't been able to weave it together the way the DC has so far. But maybe they'll feel emboldened maybe. given that DC just lost to Philly. Quick update from Raleigh. The Flyers were up 7-4 at the end of one. Jacksonville responded, and it's tied at 12 at the half. Raleigh and Jacksonville, their third meeting of the year. Raleigh winning two games in Jacksonville, one handily and one at the buzzer. Jacksonville looking for revenge. Very possible if Jacksonville wins that game and Dallas wins here, there'll be three teams, each with two losses in the AUDL South Division. Looks like we're shaping up to have another interesting Tuesday toss, Evan. Coming up on the AUDL.com at some point on Tuesday, once I make sense of all this. Sun drifting behind the clouds. The lights are on here at Bree Stevens Field. The Roughnecks bleeding time from the clock. Malachek says enough of this patience. Marshall in the end zone as the Dallas run continues. I've said it before and I'll say it again. When your team has the capacity to score in that fashion, with that speed, with that level of creativity from a throw, it is really tough to adjust defensively. You simply cannot guard the entire field. With 6.48 to go in the third quarter, Madison led 14-12. And over the last 9-18, it's Dallas 7, Madison 1. The Radicals, if they're going to have any chance, need somebody to make a play. Brown, Nelson, Camp, Barker, Shrywise, Riggles, and Annan, the seven candidates to make it on this point. Brown launching. Shrywise back in there. That'll get the crowd going a little bit. Good to see Shrywise let it rip a little bit in terms of the sprint. And Andrew Brown, who doesn't huck it much, picks his spots. Certainly, and picks it wisely. I would trust Shrywise if he's streaking deep, then clearly he's feeling good enough to go for it. Well, we've seen some crazy stuff happen in the league and, of course, in this stadium. The Radicals know that with nine minutes to go, a three goal deficit is far from insurmountable. But work to do defensively. It's now critical for this defensive squad to get a turn and then use that disc wisely. One thing at a time. First, they got to get the disc. Slack guarded by Kanaki. Headed Scantling bids. And KPS invokes the integrity rule and calls the foul against Mickle. Let's see it. And he got the arm, the wrist. Respectable maneuver from Pettit Scantling from Racine, Wisconsin. Now resides in Milwaukee. Mickle, a little shaken up. Hopefully he's all right. Dallas keeps possession. But going back to what you said, KPS is the type of guy that could change the momentum for his team. So, so close. Nice dish up the line. Mazer. And throws it away. Everhart comes up with a poach interception. 
much easier D than I thought we'd have to see from Madison. Pettit Scantling too far for Kanaki. Just in the second half, this Madison D line that registered a bunch of breaks in the first quarter has not been able to get it going. Marshall for Slack. Wow. Wow's right. Free child to Mazer. To Free Child. You make a mistake against Dallas, they make you pay. Yeah, really a regrettable throw from KPS. You know, with seven and a half minutes left in the quarter, there's still ample time to close this gap. There was no rush for the Madison D to try and put the disc in that quickly. They could have taken more conservative shots and still worked it down just fine. And then Dallas, as you said, makes you pay. Dallas so good at small ball right in front of the end zone line. Megan, Madison had four breaks in the first quarter. And Dallas's O-line has not been broken since. One of the things Madison assistant coach Jake Spiro told me before the game was that the Dallas O-line does a great job playing D when they turn it over. And we've seen that. Radicals have too. Active mark from Emmons on camp. Now Brown swings it to Barker. Barker, by the way, as you may have noticed, wearing the number 73 tonight. Barker wears number 12. The problem is so does Scott Riggles. Riggles coming out of retirement with his old number 12 jersey. He couldn't have two number 12s. Barker will be number 12 going forward. Today he's wearing Tim DeBiles number 73. One of my favorite stories is Tim DeBile wears number 73 because he was born in 1973. This is the type of half though as Annan gets the D under. Maybe that's the type of play that can turn things around, but the Radicals need to act fast. Down four with 6.30 remaining. Camp back to Shrywise, to the end zone. Riggles. Three-point game, 6.17 to play. Smart offense off of a beautiful D from Tom Annan. I'm not sure Annan gets enough credit for his athleticism. And we've seen him do it in the air. We've seen him bid for a score. We've seen him do it on D. Yeah, we've certainly seen more from him this game than I think we typically do. I think because he's just such a trusty, reliable handler that he doesn't normally have to branch out the way he has this game. But that Madison offense really took care of business. That particular point, being conservative yet quick with the disc, putting one up on the board. More work to be done for the Madison O-line. But first, the D-line back out there. Mazer, Free Child, and Malachek on offense for Dallas with Mickel, Coffin, Slack, and Marshall. You look at the makeup of this Dallas O-line. A veteran in Malachek. A couple guys in Marshall and Slack that certainly weren't household names before they joined the Roughnecks in the AUDL. You got Free Child and Mickle, a couple bona fide superstars. Mazur probably in that department as well. Abe Coffin has certainly found his niche. Oh, what a catch by Marshall, keeping possession alive, and that's been the story of the day. Dallas continues to make the tough plays. And they're back up by four. I find Dallas such an interesting team. I called a game where they were playing at Austin last year, and they were looking sluggish, and they were behind the first half of the game. 
the second half of the game, they came alive, they took charge, they took over, they chatted with Jimmy Mickle after the game, and he simply said, well, we were lethargic, and we decided not to be lethargic anymore. Obviously, there were some strategic adjustments that they made, but sure. I find their team mentality so interesting that as a collective, they can say, hey, we're gonna ramp up the intensity. That means we're gonna make better throws, we're gonna make better decisions, but at the same time, we're just gonna function better right now. Well, it's a byproduct of Patrick Eberle's approach as the head coach, who's really a player coach. He's active tonight, hasn't played much, hasn't needed to. And aside from Eberle's uh, demeanor, it's obviously about these particular players, very self-motivated, Looking for camp, poorly thrown by Barker. Not nearly enough float. I mean, that's just the, the juxtaposition of one team making a really tough play, and then the other team failing to make the, I don't want to say routine play, but certainly it was there to be made. The Madison Radicals in franchise history have only lost twice here at Bree Stevens Field. They're 35 and two here at home. They get a turnover with 440 remaining. Those two losses were last August and back on May 12th, 2013, a one point loss to Chicago. That's nearly 1500 days ago. Shrywise feeling all right. Obviously, last year's loss for Madison was in the postseason. And they're going to call contact on Peterson, interfering with Riggle's catch. Actually calling it on the throw, so Shrywise will have it. And now Dave Wiseman is coming off the field, taking an injury. Peter Graffy replacing him. Now you look at last year's loss on this field for Madison, it was a playoff game. The Radicals have won their last 30 regular season games here at Breeze. Frewed over the back of Graffy, and Graffy can't believe there wasn't a call. Doesn't look like his old teammate is going to change anything. That was uh, actually Dalton Smith who went up behind him, and now the other way. Hollerin in pursuit. Riggles can't get there. What a throw for the Roughnecks. And that might be the knockout blow. Riggles very nearly there, but Hollerin had good position. Went up just a touch earlier and was a step ahead. Dalton Smith stepping up to the line. Finding Abe Coffin and the former radical Abe Coffin. Let it rip. This place is about as quiet as it ever gets in the fourth quarter of a radicals game. Good point. This is not a sight Madison fans have to see very often. Madison on the road each of the next two weekends. They're at Minnesota next Saturday. The wind chill have been stingy. They've allowed the second fewest goals per game in the league, allowing less than 19 goals per game. Pruce shooting it for Hart. Not quite. And after going to Madison, or after going to Minnesota next week, then the Radicals have a double header road trip weekend to Pittsburgh and Detroit on June 17th and 18th. You see Madison at Detroit, you think, well, that's a win for the Radicals. I'm sure the Breeze felt the same thing about DC at Philly. Things are different this year in the AUDL. Yeah, you really cannot take anything for granted. Roughnecks experienced back-to-back -back losses last month in Jacksonville and Raleigh. But 
on their way to a very impressive road win. Dallas certainly loves playing here at Breeze. They'll improve to 3-0 with wins over the other three division champs from last year. Frood back in Madison with a new jersey. Able to get the reset, Scuba to Bennett. Bennett was pointing for someone to cut to the Scuba side. Dallas in no particular hurry. Hogg over to Emmons. Precious time ticking away and the Dallas Roughnecks facing adversity this season in a way that they didn't last year. When everything just seems so easy, they won eight of their 14 games by double digits in the regular season. They went 14-0 and and their average margin of victory was nine and a half. They've taken a good minute off the clock in the red zone. Jay Frude asked Brian Hart if he thought he hit him in the hand. Brian Hart says no. And Brian Hart just throws it away. I am not as sure at all what motivated that decision. I mean, it was either he felt bad about not making the integrity call, or he just lost his composure and launched it to the press box. Maybe he thought time was about to expire yeah. at the end of regulation, but he still had 45 seconds on the clock. Dallas was down 10-8 at the half, and the Roughnecks have won the second half 14-7. It's now 15 to seven Dallas in the third and fourth quarters combined and another sweet goal for Jay Frood. I mean, this game, Megan, it was such back and forth. The teams traded holds for the first nine points in the third quarter before Dallas broke three times in a row and they just carried that momentum into the fourth. And this was certainly the contingency I was most expecting from Dallas that when the chips were down and the time was running out, they would ramp up the intensity, start playing tighter, more cohesive, and unstoppable. Dallas gonna improve to eight and two. Again, they don't leave the state of Texas the rest of the regular season. And this win might help them stay in Texas in the postseason. Colin Camp takes one shot to the end zone. Mostly white jerseys are there. And it is spiked down. Final score here at Bree Stevens Field. Dallas 23, Madison 17. The first regular season home loss since May of 2013 for the Radicals. It's a great franchise. They fall to 63 and 12 all time. But the Dallas Roughnecks, after a 17 and 0 2016, are now 25 and 2 in their franchise history. These are the two preeminent franchises in the league. Megan, who knows, they may meet again at championship weekend, but for neither squad, it's going to be easy. I think both teams learned some important lessons today. Dallas learning how they can adjust against a team from an outside division. Madison learning again what they need to change so that they don't face defeat. For Megan Tormey, this is Evan Lempler saying so long from Bree Stevens Field. Cross Coast Challenge continues in two weeks in Toronto with the flamethrowers in the rush. Next week we're out west, but Jay Frood wins it in his return to Madison tonight. The Roughnecks take it 23-17.